And that's what I'm saying. I'm saying it's time to become a person that is healthy enough to attract healthy, but also to choose being healthy, which isn't right away. It's like choosing to work out of the gym, guys. You don't go to the gym and work out 10 days in a row and you've lost 50 pounds. That's not how it works. You have to first choose to be healthy and then you got to do the work to get there. You don't become healthy because you've chosen it. You got to do the work to get there. You got to dispel old habits. You have to like literally break the construct of whatever your body and your mind and your consciousness thinks it, things have to go a certain way. Like you have to dismantle the person you are. You have to lay to rest the version of you that would date an Eileen or Julia. You have to literally do a funeral for yourself and that happens eventually. It's literally like going to the gym. You cannot show up to the gym, jump on the treadmill, and within a week, get your ideal body weight and composition. You have to work on it every day and it gets harder. It does not get easier. When you work out at first, people always go like, oh, you get like beginner gains. When you work out, you realize how weak you are. When you start going to therapy or you try to be healthy, you realize how fucked up you are. And the good news is there's another side. And the good news, the good news after a year or six months or whatever time it is for you, eventually you're actually going to have muscle and you're actually going to be strong and you're actually going to be capable. And that's what you do with mental health and that's what you do with introspection. You make the decision to be healthy and then you do the work. Let's go ahead. And this is hopping into a very specific bubble. I don't even know if you guys are in this bubble. And this is catching up with Julia, who's a really famous lesbian in age gap relationship, talking on um, theme here. And this is the truth about our marital problems, okay? Hi, sweeties. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about things that I've wanted to talk about for a very long time, but I never felt I could because I never wanted to paint my wife in a bad light and uh, I want things to work out. So I've been keeping so much to myself, but now it got to a point to where I just have to talk about it. And I oh, this goes back to the question we asked earlier in stream, you know, when do you talk about your marital problems? And again, for me and my husband, my partner, we've decided to not talk about our marital problems to friends, family, or the public. And especially for reasons, like, I don't want this. I don't want to make our marital problems into content. Maybe like 10, 20 years down the line, we can talk about it if there's problems. Hopefully there won't be problems because hopefully we'll be on the same page and be open and communicative. But like this, like, I don't want to do this. In my past, I've had partners on the internet. I've made content about my relationships. It just, it's not great. It's not healthy for us to have all of these people's opinions in our marriage, you know? just have to tell you what is going on because people have <laughs> such a completely wrong idea of what actually happened. See, you shouldn't be relying on the internet. The internet should not be in your freaking relationship. And this is the consequence of making your relationship content. Like, again, I get it 100%. It really brings in the views, but it's really, you're giving, you're just allowing people to in it. You know what I mean? You're, you're in it, you know? Oh, wait, Hada, let me clarify. You said no talking about marital problems with friends. Yeah, I don't talk about my marital problems with friends, but... If it's abuse related, obviously talk to your friends or really trusted people in your life to have that conversation with. But if it's not mar if it's not abuse related, like you're not worried it's abusive, then no. I think marital problems are private and you need to problem solve together or you need to see a counselor or a therapist. I feel like talking to friends has been negative in my relationships and it never worked in the past personally. And I feel like the strongest relationships I model my relationship after, they don't talk to their friends about their relationship problems. They only seek advice from people that are neutral, like priests, counselors, third parties. So for me, um, I'm not a fan. But for you guys, it might work. I just don't want anyone in our business, like when we can problem solve it ourselves. Because we're on the team. Again, I said it before. We're on the team. You're not on my team. I don't need your input on the team unless you're a coach and a coach is not on the team and friends are not a coach and they're not on the team. So friends don't need to know nothing unless it's abuse. If you're afraid you're being abused, please seek out help from your family and friends and they'll let you know. I've recently posted a video here on YouTube with my wife Eileen saying that we have an open marriage and uh, a lot of people commented that 
this looks like a desperate attempt to save the marriage. That happened with that other lesbian couple. What was their name? The ones who won that landmark legal case over revenge uh, corn. What was their name? Brooke, Brett, Brit, uh, Br uh, I never remember anyone's names. Anyways, they also did the same thing, right? They like opened up their marriage. And a lot of people do as a last ditch attempt. Guys, if you want to be poly, if you have an open relationship, make sure you're both truly into it. Don't try things like that out of debt. Like, see, this is what I'm saying. Instead of going to a counselor, instead of going to someone who can help you like solve the problem, people are like, you know what I'll do? We're having problems. Let's just open up the relationship. And I'm like, why are you bringing other people into your, your issues? I've had callers. I've had people come to me and they're like, I'm so excited. This couple, they're into me. I'm going to start a relationship with them. And it's like, they're obviously bringing you into their relationship to deal with their relationship ending or like breaking up. So many people will open up their relationships, which is, I think, so, so just toxic. And they'll bring people into their toxic dying relationship, right? Instead of just actually wanting to be open or poly. If you really want to be open and poly because you're healthy, great. If you do it because you're toxic, like, man man bria and chrissy yes thank you and um that's true <laughs> i agree it is okay wait jj my ex had the same perspective on talking with friends and it made me feel trapped and isolated and we didn't work out but i don't vent in a way that puts down my partner that's the thing though did your partner use it as a way to control you right because that's not the same thing Saying you're on a team with your partner is saying like he also doesn't want to talk to his friends. Like we don't want to talk to our friends about our problems. We're not interested. And then if our friends are like, tell me, tell me about your problems. Like, tell me. It's like I don't want to vent to my friends about my partner because one, there's nothing to vent about. So that's number one. If you have something to vent about about your partner, tell a counselor. Right? If you can't problem solve with your partner, I don't think you're on a team. Like, you are on a team, but, like, why are you going to your friends? They're not in the relationship. If you're talking about something that isn't to the caliber I'm talking about, if you're just asking them, like, hey, should we put the pool in the backyard or in the front yard? That's different. That's normal stuff. So what kind of problems are you having? Or what are we calling problems? Is it a language difference, maybe? When I'm thinking about problems, I'm thinking about intimate problems. If they're intimate, why are you telling your husband's, like, why are you telling people about your partner's intimacy? But if it's not intimate, then that's not really a problem. It's a preference. Like, you know what I mean? Like, are we talking about, what are we talking about when we say we go to our friends about our relationships? Are you, you know what I mean? What are we really saying? Because like, maybe I'm just thinking about different things, but I'm talking about intimate things. You know what I mean? Uh, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it work. So when I refer to hate comments during this video, I'm not referring to these people who said that who are right and who are just saying that because they're worried about both of us so I, I actually appreciate that so that's not what i'm talking about in this video but i posted a short 90 second clip from this video on my instagram and tiktok and that went viral it got like a, a million views on instagram and something like that on tiktok and uh i got so much hate so much hate more hate than i ever got in, before in my whole life i've been doing youtube for probably around 10 years and uh, i've always been like on the controversial side because of my age gap relationship i got lots of hate before when i had other other viral videos on youtube so I've, I've been hated on quite a bit like more than the average youtuber before i don't know about the average youtuber girl like i feel like all youtubers in a certain sphere get a lot of the hate but that's because like you're controversial or but nothing on this level that i got now on instagram and tiktok and uh, basically what most people have been saying there is that I'm a gold digger, I'm only with my wife for money, and uh, <laughs> and I'm actually like being horrible to her, and she doesn't want to have an open marriage. It's just me sort of like forcing her into it and using- Who suggested it? Who suggested the open marriage? Who did it? Who was the one who suggested it? That's the question. Her for her money and being horrible like that because people think I just wanna be with her 
for money while sleeping around with younger women. And is that what's happening? Is that what's happening? And uh, that is so, so not true in so many ways. And it's like, why don't I believe it? Why did I also think the same thing? <laughs> My partner and I both said the same thing because I had told him a little bit about their relationship. And I was like, mm. And my partner was like, oh, yeah, she's definitely like she's the one who opened it up. Right. I was like, oh, probably because the older partner looks happy and content, like more in the relationship. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Discourse says, why do I barely know her and her content? And I already feel like she has more of a personality than the other couple because she does because she does. After everything I've been through, it's a huge slap in the face. And I'm going to talk I'm going to talk about it and explain why. Okay, yeah, JJ. Maybe language. I love to talk to my sister about stuff, but I wouldn't share a partner's personal stuff or vulnerabilities, especially without consent. That would be for the counselor. Okay, same. Because I tell, I talk to my sister too, and we talk about our relationships, obviously. We're just not like sharing our partner's vulnerabilities or like I'm not – like if my partner has like stuff – like a vulnerability, like things that are private. We don't share. But obviously, I talk about my relationship with my sister. So, like, in my family and my friends, like, obviously. But especially my sister. I talk about, obviously. But he he and I talk about what is okay to share. And, like, he has friends, too. And he asks the same questions. Like, hey, can I tell them about this? Or can I tell them about this? Or um, can I tell them about this? Now, one green flag of my partner is that when I was courting him, he said, you can tell your family anything about me that you think they should know about me. And I think that's really great. He's basically saying, I trust you to share the right things about me with your family and not the wrong things about me with your family. As if to say, he trusts me not to abuse his trust in vulnerabilities and just tell anybody and everybody, you know, versus some people out here, some people out here, okay, they be sharing their partner's vulnerabilities with like just about everybody, including the internet, you know? You know, but yeah, I definitely talk to my sister about my relationships. I just, I'm very, I want to really think about the consent of my partner, but my partner, obviously, like I said, huge green flag is he was like, obviously tell anything you want about me to my, your family that you think you need to tell them, especially when we were courting because he, well, he didn't want me to feel trapped. So yeah. So when I met Eileen about five and a half years ago, six years ago, it's a long time like, before we got married and everything. I had always felt very lonely because I moved to the UK when I was 18 on my own. Sorry. Why is she crying? <laughs> I was not ready for an emotional video, my bros. Why is she crying? I didn't I know. And I had a really tough time moving there. It was like a very traumatic thing. I went through some some crazy, crazy stuff. Also, is she even crying? I haven't seen a single tear come down that eye. Sorry, my camera battery. Oh, no, that's the worst when you perform crying on your kitchen floor and the battery dies. Oh, no. I'm just kidding. I'm being a real bitch, but I just like don't believe it so far. Died. And I'm sorry. I've always been suspicious of their relationship out of ignorance, maybe because again, I'm biased against age gap relationships. I'm a hater. Well, as I was saying, that was a really tough time for me, and I, I always <sighs> really wanted a family because you know I missed my family back in my country, and uh, I wanted that that unity, that love, and I've always been a very, very loving, affectionate person, and all. All the relationships I had before Eileen, although, you know, I had lovely relationships, but I never found someone that could match my energy. Like, I was always, like, more affectionate than my partner. But then I met Eileen, and it was really, really a magical time in my life when I met her, because I felt like I finally found someone that was exactly like me. Like, we were both so loving to each other, and... Like, I finally met my match. We were so, just so over-the-top loving. And she wanted, you know, to marry me and have a family. And uh, when I say family, I don't necessarily mean children, but that unity. So it was a really, really beautiful time. And I fully gave myself and all my love to her. I really, I really did. <laughs> I do read people saying that. Where are the tears? 
She cries uniquely. No, just using her after her money, which she doesn't even have. It's just... It's just so hard. It's just so heartbreaking because I... Okay, bro, literally, please, somebody... Comments, please accuse me of using my husband for money. Start accusing me of using my, my husband for money. Why would I... I would be like, that's weird. Why are you saying that? That's weird. It doesn't even make sense. Why is she crying about it? So what? So a bunch of trolls on the internet think you're using her for money? So? Are you? No? Who cares? See, this goes back to that Gary guy who I don't even like that much. But for him to say, like, what do I care that some people on the internet think I'm using my husband for money? What money? Like, also, who cares? You know what I mean? Like, where? Well, like, ugh. like, hello, ma'am. I just wanted to be loved. <laughs> Oh, there it is. There's the tear. Sorry, I didn't expect to cry. <laughs> I just, I just been holding it in for so long. Oh. I've made a lot of crying videos on the internet. They're all privated now. Okay, but maybe she should think about privating this one. <laughs> Sorry. So we moved in together and we got married pretty soon. You know, honestly, I kind of like this kitchen, though. It's kind of a vibe. Like, it's interesting because it's so small, but I like the cabinets. You know, into our relationship, I think we had been together for like a year or a year and a half. I think a year and a half when we got married. And it was the most beautiful time in my life. <laughs> Bryson I says Brittany only married her Croatian bride for the money. True. And for cheap rent. True, Momo. That's really, yeah, that's true. And that anime access, that country, that crunchy roll. Uh, yeah, let's go premium memberships. That's really why I married him. <laughs> I also got a lot of hate around that time because of Yeah, the girl, you've been crying this whole time. What do you mean you didn't know you were going to cry? Literally, you could have just like, the, okay, I get crying in our early 20s. We're a mess on the internet. It's a whole thing. But I took down all my crying videos unless it's like good crying with the audience. Like this kind of stuff. Like this should be private. This is what I'm saying. Like, mm, Mm -mm. the way your brain wants to be entertained so it starts judging the decor well i'm just waiting for the the gist like the you know Brittany's a gold digger used her husband i heard pass it on oh v <laughs> tell the internet maybe oh let's spread a rumor on the internet about me about me being a gold digger spread it all over have people watch my videos i'll make a ton of money it'll be great maybe that's what i should do maybe i should start rumors about myself did you guys hear that i might be pregnant like a lot of people thought even back then that i was a gold digger i'm definitely not pregnant and, uh, i shared a pregnancy test result to discord <laughs> all day or they was creepy or disgusting and whatever people thought about they didn't even mind it was like the happiest time ever it was so beautiful like getting married and everything it was like so beautiful and at that time we decided like that i was gonna pay like the bills and stuff and take care of us because like eileen was unemployed but she was also like letting me film our relationship and post it online which was also like helping me financially because the channel did grow grow a lot at that time so i thought you know it's like a, a partnership we're doing this together like it's uh, I, we both thought it was fair at that time. Do we... I feel like a lot of people get into relationships where they're lonely, so they end up together, and then they realize, like, life is hard. Financially being on the same page, emotionally being on the same page. And also, I know for a fact that this channel probably blew up because I remember all the videos I used to watch back in the day from, from Julia. Is that her name? Because I stopped watching her years ago. I was never really a fan. I'm not really a big... I'm not a fan of her content. I just watch her because I'm curious about her her stuff. But she's, li <laughs> she's, I'm sorry. All her videos that were popular were about her age gap relationship, which was weird. The age gap was big. And like, here, hold on. Okay, videos. Oh, she sings too. God, I'm so out of the loop. Okay, so older lesbian couple, me, my girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. It's not ready to film in both of these little crop things. Yeah, yeah, okay. So do an account to three and then we say, hi, sweet. Yeah, okay, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so do we look at... We know it hasn't been a terribly long time. And... <gasps> <gasps> hey, look at me. Who am I? I just wandered in. <laughs> so cute. 
I'm so happy to introduce you to my beautiful, beautiful girlfriend. Go for it. They don't match. They don't match. I said it right here. They don't match. It doesn't make sense. I don't like it. I'm sorry. They don't match. It doesn't make sense. The relationship doesn't make sense. They don't match. They don't match. She's, they're both very pretty in their own respective ways. I think they're both hot in their own respective ways, but they just don't match. And Go for it. <laughs> Her name it's not even because of the age. They don't even match in terms of genre. They're different kinds of lesbians. Her name is Eileen. Eileen, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Eileen, and I'm so happy to be introduced Aww. to you guys, particularly. And I've already met met her. <laughs> She's pretty wonderful. <laughs> and you guys are wonderful. Since I've known Julia, which... I love her lipstick, the dark lipstick. Which, as you probably know, hasn't been a terribly long time. But in the time that I've known her and fallen in love with her, um, I've also thought... See, why is this so performative? Is this how she is? she autistic? I'm just kidding. We're very neurodivergent here on this channel. I'm just, I'm maybe, okay. But like, see how she's performing? She's like, oh, oh, oh. I don't get it. I'm in love with you guys because you're so nice and so wonderful and supportive. <laughs> I mean, you really do it. Uh, like, what is that? Is that just who, this is why I never got into her channel. It always felt performative to amazing. me. My amazing. My subscribers are amazing. Oh, she's a bit shy and I'm like super shy as well. And I'm a little nervous. I'll try to get unnervous for you. <laughs> you are so cute. It's the first time we're actually filming a video together, mm -hmm. so we are a bit nervous, but I hope you don't mind. <laughs> and it's like literally the first time. It's not like it's we like... practiced for two days. No, before. yeah. We didn't practice. How old is practice. the age difference? 35 well, years? We're gonna be. See, she's beautiful. Well, uh, yeah. In language. I'm <laughs> Shoot him. Snip. Tiling to come back and film oh, more videos with me. Oh, how nice. You need to really like this video a lot or she's not coming back. Aww. Now, some people believe like age gap relationships, like the El Jirazi guy I was on the panel with uh, for Wix things said like, I was in an uh, age gap relationship and yeah, it didn't last. I was like, okay, so it failed. <laughs> but he comes from the perspective of like, it just matters like that you had a good time together. That's fine. I don't. So I'm not judging your relationship. I'm judging it if it was in my bubble. And in my bubble, if a relationship doesn't get you to old age retirement and wiping each other's butts because you're in diapers and you're 95, then I don't want it. But you do you. Okay, what is literally the age gap? Does anybody know their age gap? Because isn't it like 30 years? What is it? It's like big, right? Hi, sweeties. Welcome back to the channel. And oh my God, look who's After back. After two intense videos, I'm back with this one. Hold on, interviewing my <laughs> age gap wife. Why do they always kiss, bro? You don't just have to kiss, bro. You're so cute. You're Keep cute. it for the better, bro. I was a little upset with you that you didn't go to my surgery. Yeah. What was your most serious relationship before Julia? How do you feel about Julia having cosmetic procedures done? Oh, what I'm uncomfortable with is Julia's never-ending quest. Hi, sweet. She's always talking about, like... <clears throat> Open marriage two weeks ago. Um, three days ago. Hi, sweeties! Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Julia Zelg, and this is my beautiful wife, Eileen. Eileen. <laughs> We've been married for four and a half years oh now. God, it's oh my shocking. God, it's shocking. Time when you flies. Think of it that yeah. way. And we decided to open our marriage a while ago, and we are ethically non monogamous. <laughs> <laughs> and people okay, are very ethically non monogamous is good. They have the right lingo. Curious about it. We've been trying to be a little bit more private for the sake. trying to be more private for uh, of our relationship yeah but it's almost a this is their main so this is julia's channel and this is her main content she talks about her relationship basically but let's see what her recent videos were yeah so she does music videos and okay here's music videos with me I will love you till it makes you sick 
Okay, I just want to make sure. Is this like 18 plus, this music video? Can I be showing this to you right now? Hold up. Um, hello? It's Croatian ad because I'm a Croatian. <laughs> okay, so I can watch this video, right? I don't have to be 18 plus. Okay, so it's YouTube safe. I was like, um... To make your knees feel weak Hold you closer Till you cannot breathe your sleep Never the same after this I won't stay but you will never leave I'll let it drip, I'll lick your lips Want to taste your desire Take a sip, you'll lose your grip or set your life on fire. I'm gonna eat you blind. I mean, I kind of like the aesthetic, if I'm gonna be totally gay about it. Like, I don't love her voice, but I kind of like the aesthetic. I'm gonna eat you blind. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat you blind. Okay, I, I feel like I'm going to get fucking in trouble here on YouTube. <laughs> Is this YouTube appropriate? I feel like I'm going to get in trouble and I do not want to get in trouble. But yeah, I don't mind the vibes of the videos. But okay, I think that's mostly her content, right? Hold on. Your love, your love, your I do pay for YouTube premium. I opened up that video on an incognito window to see if, um, of course, I pay for premium. Guys, YouTube premium is the best. YouTube premium is literally life. The only reason we got an ad is because I had to open it up on incognito to see if it was 18 plus. Yeah, so it looks like all her stuff is kind of music videos. And let's see what she's been doing. Um, uh, okay, so drama video, music video, wife, go what I got my wife for Christmas, our open relationship, which has had, of course, the biggest views, my botched plastic surgery, spilling the tea, 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 controversy, Lesbian couple trying on bikinis, reacting to our old music videos, very sexual, very exploitative, very whatever you do. Um, okay, got it. Impossible because we started out being so out there and sharing everything. And today we're going to be sharing our experience of this. It's something that a lot of people talk about. Some people have experienced, some people are curious. Yeah, and we're going to be answering the top questions about our open marriage. So like why we decided to do this, what are the rules for us? Yeah, exactly. Who are we dating at the moment and how that's affecting us, yeah, all that yeah. kind of stuff. So before we start the video, please subscribe and activate the notifications because we're going to have some really interesting and fun videos coming up. If you want to watch daily vlogs, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok. And we are acting way more disgusted by the lesbian couple than the straight couple. It's not homophobia. It's because the PDA. I think we're all too neurodivergent here to appreciate PDA, right? Does anyone here, like, I don't love PDA. I hate watching other people kiss. I'm gonna be real with you. I hate watching other people kiss. It, like, I get very texture sensitive and, like, I hate, I could do without it. I could literally do without it. Like, mm -mm, I don't really love it. So like anytime there's like too much PDA, I'm just like, mm, I'm good. I'm good. So anytime it's too hypersexual, I'm, I don't love it. Um, So I think it's that. You know what I mean? And give us a thumbs up, up because, because it really helps the channel. <laughs> It just feels very, they're all so performative, but at least they're more spicy. <gasps> but at least they're more spicy. See how like the other couple we reviewed, like bland, beige on beige, at least them, there's colors and sparkles and like so much queerness. You know what I mean? At least it's like, ooh, I'm like, okay, what? What's happening? I like that. But still kind of performative in a way that I hate. Okay, so I think we should start from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Ingrid, you're wrong. You said it's because she looks like she's kissing her mom. No, 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 no. I'm kind of into that, like, stepmom porn sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, I love a good vibe of, like, kissing an older woman vibe. So, like, I'm into it. That's what I'm saying. 
If you want a fantasy of like someone taking advantage of you, you got to go for the older person fantasy. <laughs> if someone's going to take advantage of you, it's going to be someone who's older. <laughs> Oh my god stop fire which is why we decided to <coughs> open the marriage why? Yeah. oh my god wait stephanie twins literally stephanie literally i used to love watching sex scenes in movies and now i absolutely can't stand them what happened same i used to like but when i was repressed and i barely had any sex in my life oh my god i would like that's what i looked for and now i'm like okay we get it sex I'm like okay we get it sex <laughs> same okay guys i've overshared a lot is that really the worst i've overshared <laughs> like, come on but like literally like same i can't watch it anymore i don't like it anymore you know what i mean <laughs> yeah exactly good evening and welcome to julia zelg news we have a very important announcement this video has been brought to you by colon broom Colon Broom is a natural dietary supplement that helps you get rid of unwanted bloating. I personally okay, no. get bloating sometimes and it's so annoying because it's painful and uncomfortable. So I've been taking the Colon Broom for a while now. I've been taking the strawberry flavor because it's delicious. And basically it helps with bloating and it's also very... Wait. Mm, is it true? Full glow calories. I mix one tasty. Mm. And I mean, it's pink. Who doesn't like she it? She in veneers. Everybody is in veneers. Whoa, that's a crazy pause. Everybody has fake teeth now. Everybody has fake teeth. Pink drink. You do that sixteen to you count. Right. Good evening. Which is why we decided to open our yeah. marriage. Why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, basically, during the pandemic, like a lot of people we were really struggling as a couple yeah yeah it was tough it was a difficult time because we were like everybody else stuck at home but we live in a small space yeah yeah and uh, i was getting my master's degree and working full-time with social media all from home while yeah. that was happening and uh, eileen was retired and uh, that kind of like put a bit of a a stressor, stressor. A, major, a major stressor yeah, on our yeah, relationship yeah. and I, I kept feeling like I had all these things to do all these responsibilities and I, I yeah. felt a bit alone yeah yeah like I needed more moral support and I, I feel like because of that I was always like putting too much pressure on you I think for us what happened was our shortcomings as people and as a couple <clears throat> were just exacerbated by the unnatural closeness you're somebody that that is very external you do tons of things and i realize that i'm even though i've always known i'm sort of a bit of a homebody but i also am very social i couldn't be social and i think the worst part of our relationship was magnified so i was getting really stressed okay so Okay, I'm going to be really honest. In my 20s, when I was figuring out who I was and who I wanted to be, I was out all the time. I was out at clubs. I was social. I was desperate to find my bubble. Who am I? Who are my friends? Who's my future partner? Who are my future partners? I was doing poly. I was in BDSM. I was so excited for my life. I was in queer groups, support groups, feminist groups, protesting, activism, working multiple jobs. I lived a full ass life, let me tell you. My 20s were a lot and I'm still living a full ass life just in a different way. Things have shifted. Once I found out who I was, I moved to a little forest in Arizona and settled near my brother who had kids and that was great. Then... I ended up finding the love of my life and I moved to Croatia to be with him, right? You guys know the story. I am monogamous, you guys know. I am a homebody. You guys know I do not leave my house. We had to leave the house today. We're stay of the week, okay? Was it nice getting out? Yes, a little bit. It was raining and fucking cold. And I prefer not to leave my house if I don't have to, but it's because there's like so much living to do just here at home. 
But I thank God every day that I ended up with a homebody who had already lived out his 20s, who had already gone bar hopping and whatever Croatians do in their youth. And so when we met up, we were ready to be at home together, cuddled in sweatpants, watching anime and working all day. All I do is work, watch anime and cuddle with my partner. That's my life. And I'm living the happiest life right now. I'm just so happy. I'm so joyful. Everything is so great. I literally get to just work, cuddle, and watch anime. It's like, oh, it's so beautiful. And when I'm back on, yo I'm just eating so much yogurt. It's so, I love it. I'm going to make my own yogurt soon. But I've been eating this delicious Greek yogurt, and I could not be more happy every time I eat it. I'm just so happy. Okay, so. The point is, is the small things to be really grateful for like the small things, but also there's nothing wrong with being extroverted and going out and getting spoons off other people and doing all these things. But I'll tell you in my twenties, how I was open to everything, open, poly, whatever was going to make me joyful, but I didn't realize what it was, was a relationship I was having with my consciousness. I thought it was the relationship I was having with other people. So I went out and I dated all these people and I tried to keep opening my relationship and I kept thinking. Well, even though my partners aren't people that I always like or respect, and even though we have problems in this relationship, maybe we can fix it because, hey, we're poly. We could just date other people. Now, we were poly when we met. We were both poly when we met. So, you know, in my monogamous, I was always, I was poly when I met most of my partners, right? And my girlfriend, when I was in my 20s, we were poly. That was easy. She had a boyfriend and like a bunch of other partners. Um, one, two, two years I did monogamy with this guy, but that didn't last because like we didn't have the same values. And then the third big relationship I had, we already poly when we met, so who cares? He had multiple partners. I was dating around. But ultimately, like, it came down to values and liking those people truly. And I'm going to tell you this, whether you're poly, which I believe in, or open, or monogamous, I just, I don't think it fixes your problems to close your relationship or open it. I don't think problems come from I don't think problems are fixed by limiting I think they're fixed by being honest about what you want and sometimes I feel like it's a cope when I hear partners talk like this like we had shortcomings and those shortcomings were revealed and blah 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 they, why are they shortcomings in the first place they're not going to be fixed by you opening up your relationship they're not going to be fixed by you forcing yourself to go out of the house is it a shortcoming that you want to be more introverted is it a shortcoming that you want to leave the house as often? Is it actually just an issue of an age gap relationship where you dated somebody who is still young and wanted to live their life and you're ready to settle down? Is it personality types? You know what I mean? Like, should you just break up? Is this, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, like, <sighs> I feel like there's something to be said about the why. Why? When you already say, like, we have shortcomings in this relationship, <clears throat> That is not the relationship I want to be in. I don't think I want to be in a relationship where I believe there's shortcomings. Like, what does that mean? What's a shortcoming? You know what I mean? Like, I believe in polyamory. I've seen it work. I know very happy, successful couples who do poly in a way that I'm like, I'm fucking, I vibe with that, right? You know what I mean? I really like, like, that's awesome. Like, it's healthy. They're all communicating. They grow old together. It's beautiful. Even if it's short-term open relationships, there's a way to do it really well. But this relationship here, like, again, oh, the shortcomings in our relationship. What would those be, bros? Yeah. Because I was trying to do all these things on my own and I struggle with depression and anxiety. So I was kind of like... Ah, see, you need to work on that. Stop making lesbian music videos and actually work on that. Just kidding. Do both. Um, hold on. Okay spiraling down in this depression we're not done with the kitchen video but this video is first because it came before the kitchen video and triggered the kitchen video so we're going to finish this video and then we're going to watch the kitchen video because they go together yeah thing and i you know try to no ingrid was joking about being straight she's obviously a lesbian i'm just kidding <laughs> ingrid's not a lesbian i think she ingrid you tell people what you are <laughs> on the live a couple if you of want. times and all that so it if you want it was, it was a tough time, but also it wasn't fair for me to put that much pressure on Eileen because she's 66 now. She has... has the right to be retired. 
she doesn't have to live life on the same pace as me because we because of the age difference we are at different stages yeah. of our lives yeah and i think it took us a while to realize that beforehand yeah right <laughs> this is what i'm saying people fall in love fall in love they get attached to people how did you this is only a five six year relation why didn't you talk how could you not have how did you not predict this again if you go to a marriage counselor or you go to a priest or you like read the marriage books ask yourself the question hey where do we see ourselves in five years if she had asked eileen or irene eileen where do you see yourself in 30 years probably dead bro probably in the afterlife of lesbian heaven what are you talking about like what are we talking about you know what i mean like why didn't you ask this question beforehand oh you know i never thought about the fact that you'd be retired and i'm like she was only five years away when you got together why not so we kind of hit a breaking point see this is what i'm saying how does the older person in that relationship not think this through what this is why I look at the older person like, where are you at? Are you stunted? I love you. I'm not. I'm so sorry. I know you're real people and I know you're a real person. But again, in these age gap relationships, you're the older person. How did you not think about it? Were you just drowning in pussy so much you couldn't th fucking think through? During that time. And uh, we, I'm just shook. I'm we shook. had to just make some changes to our relationship so we could still be happy together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we made lots of changes. And one day maybe we'll make a video just about that and uh, uh, more about like the, that period of our yeah, lives. The, the logistics of it all. Yeah. yeah. But one of the things that we decided to do was to open our marriage. Yeah, yeah. Because I was craving that extra moral support, really. And uh, that has been really helpful because I got that. Get a therapist, get a dog, get a friend, get a mom. That allowed me to take the pressure off you and the novel. If this is what I'm saying, I don't want to go for intimate emotional support to someone that I'm like, yes, go to your friends, go to, go to people. Why are you going to open your marriage? And if you're opening your marriage, like let's have a serious conversation. Again, there's something red flag, not okay. Again, I'm pro open relationships, but not to save a failing one because that means it's failing. Why is it failing? It's not failing because you have an open relationship. She just said it because I need emotional support. I need support. So hello. <laughs> JJ said, I thought you said date a therapist. <laughs> Get a therapist. Like this is what I'm saying. Your, your life's not going to be solved by opening up your relationship because that was never the problem. It's probably not going to even help. It's probably going to lead to divorce. You can't solve a problem by creating a new one. Expect, like, too much. Yeah, I mean, it's sometimes the closest person to you. Is Nail. Nail. You go to the corner. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Get a mom. She kind of did, though. <laughs> I still have this horrible, oh my God, my cough is not great, but it's better. I'm not coughing much, but when I do, holy shit. Oh, it's funny. Woo! Who is the one unable to sort of provide, sometimes you need something from outside, one needs something from outside, outside of whatever, whether marriage or, you know, family or something. Yeah, so, but I'm really happy that you found a way to, you know, and it was fair in, in, you know, reasonable. Okay, so another thing people are curious about. Red flag, red flag, red flag. This is so clear to me. They're red flagging like a bleed. <laughs> this is so dumb. Why? Uh, this is why people get a bad reputation for open relationships because you all do it when you're toxic and broken and dysfunctional. Literally, that's my problem. I feel like everyone sits there and goes, you know what will really solve this? Drugs. No. You know what will really solve this? Lying to my partner. No. Hey, you know what will really solve this? Cheating. No. Hey, you know what will really solve this? Leaving my family and abandoning them. No. Hey, do you know what will really solve my problems? And I'm like, no. Running away will never solve your fucking problems. Okay? They will catch up with you. Stop running away from your problems and face them.
is what are the rules yeah 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 because i think that's important i think a lot of people who are ethically non-monogamous have their own rules that work for them yeah yeah that's different for everybody yeah Mm -hmm. so for us the main thing is to be very honest with each other about what we're thinking like who we're dating and what's going on at all times that's i think the core element of what we unearthed through the stress was that a desire to be honest with each other. Yes. That is like really, really essential. And it's been the driver to this, you know, these changes we've experienced, which have helped us to continue to be together, which is lovely. And also we are very honest with the people yes. we date, like yeah. about our situation. That's good. Okay. And- Major props. That's good. That they're talking and consent is in. And I assume they're getting tested. They said at least respond. They said ethical non-monogamy so that's really good signs that they're at least being very good about it which is good what we're looking for yeah that's important to not yeah we don't want to hurt it yeah Yeah. we don't want to go messing around with other people just to please ourselves right (laughs) like like, how was your night whoa (laughs) oh and also like if we are ever uncomfortable with anything we tell each other and we make changes yeah yeah and we always put like our love and our marriage first yeah yeah you know I will ask her questions Mm -hmm. like you know to be sure that because I'm not going to interview the Mariah shut up Mariah what I was think I was thinking the same like almost similar thing I was thinking almost the same thing you said it's like she counts in her head how long to leave it, the body language. You said it's like she forced herself to slowly bring it back down, the hand. I was thinking, oh, my God, <clears throat> are we all just like, is it? Is this us? Are we the problem? I was thinking, like, she's not thinking of how long to leave the hand. She's thinking and pose like this and like this for the camera and pay attention to this for the camera. I'm thinking she's directing herself like a director. Right? Like, I'm thinking she's narrating in her head, like, and touch her shoulder and nod the head and move and giggle (laughs) and sit down. That's what I think she's thinking. But I thought I was being too mean. And then you said that. And I was like, okay, never mind. The people, you know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) That's the next part that we interview the other. (laughs) I mean, I'm very protective of Eileen, too. So I always ask a lot of questions and I want to make sure you're safe and protected. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly how I feel. Maybe it's trauma from her childhood and this is how she was taught to like show affection and love, right? Maybe we're just watching trauma. Maybe she's not like malicious. Maybe it's all just trauma. For for numerous reasons, yeah. yeah. Oh, and if like we've introduced people to each other, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's very open and honest. And- she neurodivergent? Do we know? Do we know if she has neurodivergency? Yeah, Happy, yeah, like that. Yeah, and sometimes I think they're like <laughs> these two. Are- they're probably, yeah, everybody will probably think this weird. <laughs> Obviously, one of the questions that would come up with this is, are we? dating well which has come up (laughs) are we dating other people right yeah and uh yes we are both casually dating it's casually i've never met casually (laughs) casually (laughs) we're dating casually yeah this beautiful lady called casually Casually. (laughs) i'm sorry i almost got myself dizzy mimicking her (laughs) like hello (laughs) ma'am so what has that been like i just like again i try look we're all always a little performative like right now i'm not gonna like I don't know, like scratch my tit in a really aggressive way, even though naturally I probably would. It's like I'm a little performing like dignity a little bit because I'm at work. But at the same time, like there's like a level of performance. That's actually I think why I've been enjoying streams because I do feel like I have a little bit of permission to kind of be like loosey goosey a little bit more, which is nice. And I have so much anxiety before I stream. I have so much anxiety before I stream, guys. Like I can't even explain it to you. Because I always get nervous. Like, I'm always dead tired before I stream. Before I stream, I'm like, I can't. I want to go to bed. I want to sleep. And then I start stream and I'm like, never mind. We have – we got to watch some stuff. It's like I get I get the spoons when I start the stream. It's really a strange phenomenon. So I like it so much better than pre-recording videos, though I love doing my podcast. I think my favorite thing is posting my podcast because I always – I do like the way that it's like a condensed monologue of myself – but with her, she does very old, almost old school YouTube content still where it's like open relationship, our rules, which by the way, I got a, I got a lot. I had a, a really nice place on the internet when I was doing BDSM and poly content. And that's really when I, I am going to be real. I really found a niche then. Like I found, I really found a niche 
when I was doing BDSM and adult content and I was doing like polyamorous or stuff stuff like I I had a vibe I had an audience I was like I I mean it was a thing but eventually again I get really bored ask, answering the same question of like how to find a dom I was like oh I gotta do something else so with them like they still kind of make content like you know what? there's a vibe to their content that is like very digestible and easy but I wonder if it also encourages performance more I wonder you know there's something about it you know V says, how do you get over your anxiety for streaming Brit? Well, first of all, it's my job. So whether I like it or not, like this is my job. You know what my partner said to me the other day, though? He said, you know, there's a reason. It's interesting to watch. He said something. I, I'm not quoting him perfectly, but basically we were both pretty tired. And of course, I still had spoons to work. Like I always, I always have spoons to work for the most part. And when I don't, like last week I was sick, I took a day off. I took a day off streaming. Like I'm I, and tomorrow. I'm a little too tired to catch up still. So I'm not doing my podcast tomorrow. So see, I'm really good. I'm good with boundaries. I'm open, but I have boundaries. But I always have enough energy to do something for work because work gives me spoons. So even when I'm totally out of energy, some parts of my work gives me enough spoons to get it done. So like you guys recharge my spoons. Editing tends to recharge my spoons. But it's getting myself to it. And streaming, I only have a lot of anxiety because like I'm kind of afraid like, oh, I'm going to be like, too mean today or like oh no I don't want to like give them bad energy today or like oh I'm too sick and I feel like if I stream I might just be too negative and like that's not how I really feel and I feel like I'll only be short-sighted because I'm out of spoons and <clears throat> because I don't feel like that's the real me you know I'm, I'm mostly anxious over like is there going to be problems today am I going to have to deal with like OBS is it going to crash on me am I going to have a fight with a YouTuber I don't want to have like oh my gosh like I'm mostly anxious over everything that could go wrong. And then because nothing ever goes wrong, I'm like, oh, never mind. So I think I'm anxious over like possibilities of things going like becoming difficult, I suppose. And I'm live. And that's what's scary is like this isn't edited. I'm live. So it's very vulnerable, you know, because you're like, oh, my gosh, like what is happening? You know, you're like live, you know. So I don't know. I think my anxiety is mostly around that. You know, so I eventually, because it's work related, I just do it, but I still just get through all of it. And I tell myself, like, you're just feeling worried. Like I explained to my body, it's upset because it's worried about all these things that like is in it, but it doesn't have to worry. And then my brain, I just tell it like, hey, bro, like, I know you're panicking. You're thinking of all these horrible things that will happen. But like, even if it does, who cares? I always tell her, like, think of all the things that have already happened. What could be worse? And maybe this time you'll actually use it for views, you, views, you dumb bitch. Like maybe one day you'll actually stay on stream and use it for views because I always end up leaving. <laughs> maybe one day we'll actually be good at YouTube. But yeah, it's like I just explained to my body, like go to work. You're fine. Everyone's nice. Your audience is great. Everything's going to be wonderful, you know. But again, going back to the content, like going back to the content. This this feels like I wonder if the cutting, the editing, the short videos are actually more pressure to be performative, you know, like for you. <clears throat> One of the things that has been difficult for me in the length, you know, in the time of our marriage in the four and a half years is my hormones are kind of like all over the place. And as mm. you well know, I just haven't had much desire, you know, and that's been a problem, Normal. you know, between that's pretty common. So for me, I just have been looking more for intellectual connections, you know mm. what I mean? I mean, I have a beautiful intellectual connection with you, but in, in seeking out other people, it's been a little... She just called... She... A little complicated because, you know, I'll have to say, just into cuddling, you know, or something. Cuddle with a chat. <laughs> oh, 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 you? No, no, you do, you do. <laughs> so, how about you? For me, it has been an interesting journey because I've been exploring my sexuality, which has come as a huge <clears throat> surprise for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for me, <laughs> but a beautiful one, you know. No judgment yeah, here. I very much identify as a lesbian because I'm 29 and I've only been attracted to women my whole life but I'm starting to realize that I might be a little more fluid than yeah, I thought I was yeah. which to me has been a little bit difficult actually because I was always so certain and so black and white about my sexuality that you think that 
of my belly more fluid than I thought is strange for me and I'm still figuring things out and uh, to me it's actually even weird to talk about it without yeah. having fully figured it out myself oh okay fair but because well, I've always accepted it really do you know what I mean mm. for yourself <clears throat> I mean I'm not saying you haven't you know that's yeah. fully your journey but sorry go ahead it's okay um but I would feel weird not bringing it up yeah. because I've always been so open about my sexuality mm -hmm. online and I've talked about it so much yeah but yeah so I'll keep you updated but this is where I'm at just exploring <laughs> yeah I mean to be fair <clears throat> to be fair <clears throat> even with me and like labels and stuff are so interesting but with like um, actually, that's why I like I kind of like love Chriselle's journey on Selling Sunset because she's dating a non-binary person. And I think that's like kind of dope. Like, I don't know. I didn't see Chriselle as being like not that Chriselle even saw herself as being like with a woman, but like and she's not with a woman. She's with a non-binary female. I'm going to get canceled. Fuck. But you know what I mean? Like, it's not a man. And so I get, like, I get it. Like, non-binary, they, them, like, not a girl. I get it. But, like, also, when you're straight your whole life and you end up with a, you're like, oh, a person who's sex is female, you're like, oh, okay. Like, that's interesting. That's, like, different. It's different. Okay, same if you're a lesbian and you end up with, like, a non-binary gender fluid human who's a male. Like, you just end up with somebody who's different. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, it's not the same. You know what I mean? It's not the same. I'm like blinking. What's the bubble language for this? What's the bubble language? Not What's the bubble language for like female presenting non-binary? I can't think. Female, mm, adult, human. Thanks, guys. <gasps> AFAB. Thank you. Assigned, at, uh, assigned female at birth. Thank you. I'm tired. Assigned female at birth. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. That's what I was trying to go for. Okay. AFAB. So like, uh, yeah, that's like different. It's very different. You know what I mean? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, I think it's lovely. And, and typically you, you're very hard on yourself. You're really, really hard on yourself. And I really mean that. Like you shouldn't oh. be so hard. Wait, I lost my normal. Uh, hold on. The non-binary's got Brit. I'm literally being canceled right on time. It's my internet. It, it My modem um, resets around this time. And so it happens. God punished her for not getting it right. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, it's the it's my router. My router <laughs> resets at this time every night. It was just a complete coincidence. The LGBTQ alliance has not come for me or revoked my membership. I'm still a member. Okay. I'm still here. Hello. Oh my God. Supporting yourself. I'm glad that there's a part of you that would open up to find this other thing and you know and to be brave enough to pursue it but don't beat yourself up about it nothing to apologize for i mean we've sorted out the rules and roles and uh limits of things so you know for yourself i'm talking about just be easier on yourself you know you, oh you're welcome but you shouldn't you don't have to thank me you know what i mean just you know be who you she seems so uh, the, the oh, eileen she just seems so like They both, mm, they both have like, mm, mm. I think they're both going through a genuine journey. I just think it's obvious, like, you know, <clears throat> this isn't what I would call a soulmate. There, I'm saying it. This is a relationship you can make work if you want it to, but I don't think these are soulmates. And I think like there are lots of people, and I don't know what that means in every bubble. I don't know what the word soulmate means in every bubble. But I mean, there are people that you meet where you're like, you're my person, right? Like, I'm going to do life with you. Cool. And like, you feel it. You're like, okay. Like, it's like the person, right? I don't think this is their person. But I think it's, I think they're trying to make it work. And I think they're making the effort in different ways. I just think there's like, I'm assuming a lot of underlining trauma. And I'm assuming they haven't asked themselves all of the questions they could. I'm assuming... Julia is, you know, the pink haired one is going through a lot of 
identity crises mixed in with like, what do I want from life? And Irene's having issues with libido and all that other stuff, which is really normal. And so it is one of those things where like, look, my partner and I have talked about this. Even if we lose our libidos and neither of us want to have sex starting tomorrow, we're not opening up this marriage. We're not interested. We've talked about it. We've discussed it. We're definitely progressive enough to talk about it. And it's just like not what we want. I don't want to seek intimacy from anyone else. He doesn't want to seek intimacy from anyone else. Um, I don't need anyone intellectually different to talk to. I don't, I mean, I have friends and family and I have the internet to already talk about life with, but like I already get that from my partner mostly. And then I have a great job where I talk to people and I have friends and stuff. But I don't need to open it up to lovers to have an intellectual conversation. You know what I mean? Oh, Selena, you said it best. It feels like a slow breakup. It does. I hate to say it. It feels like every relationship I've either been in or seen of people who are breaking up. There's a feeling when you see people go on again and off again, when you see people not making it work, it's like, okay, when's the official breakup? Let's go. There are just some relationships that you're just like, where's the breakup? You know, they seem like nice enough people, but bro, this feels painful. But also, like, I wish them the best. I think they could probably make it work and make it work for them. But at the same time, like, they just don't feel like soulmates to me. You are. You You're know? so supportive. I'm going to cry. Oh, don't, don't cry. Don't Thank cry. You so much. It's okay. It's all right, baby. <laughs> You're so lovely. It's just like the awkwardest hug I've ever seen. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> <I can't laughs> <make it. laughs> You're so cute. Are you okay, Tom? I'm okay. Yeah, Are you sure? You've been hard to talk about. Oh, yeah. it's okay. So another thing that people have been interested in knowing is, are we dating together or separately? Meaning, do we go out on dates, you know? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> We've been dating separately for the moment because we have such different like taste. Yeah. And we are so different, too. So sometimes... Oh. Mm. We might both fancy someone, but then that person might not fancy both of us. Or it could be the other way around. Someone might fancy both of us, but we're... Don't American people say fancy in that? No. No. The English do. Fancy. But that's okay. Do they understand what I mean? Yeah, like, I, think uh, so. I think they will now. <laughs> if you have, have the hearts for someone. Yeah, if you're, like, sweet on someone. Oh, that's sweet sounds, like, someone. really nice. Attractive. Attractive. <laughs> sweet yeah, yeah. on someone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god sometimes and they've been together a long time i don't know how rocky their relationship has been so that's <coughs> why we're gonna watch the other video after this to kind of go over it because i am curious were they fighting were there issues or was it just like i need more from this relationship which again is like really disappointing to hear sometimes but again i really do appreciate relationships that can like adapt and evolve i just want it to be done because the relationship is thriving not failing we're not trying to But some people think conflict and failing is what brings the relationship to a better place. Maybe. But mm. to the same people are the people who are That's why I believe in like relationship counseling or some variation of it because you're going to a professional. Again, going to your friends to discuss your relationships is not therapy. And going to your family and friends to discuss this is not therapy or counseling. You can't just, okay, you have to go to a counselor who has a professional relationship with you and you pay money to for an appointment. So there's a professional setting which allows the work to actually get done. We're attracted to and not attracted to both of us. The kitchen video is more recent than this. The kitchen video is in relation to this video, so we're going to watch that next. Because we are so different and yeah, we have different yeah, types. Yeah, yeah. But, so we have been, but if the opportunity presented itself we would be yeah, open to it yeah yeah i mean you know of course that would probably be somebody's first thought so are you looking for a third yeah but the thing is i think what would would compel us to this and yes selena not all professionals are good but some are fantastic it's just saying that like if you're having marital problems a professional is going to hopefully have a more nuanced perspective on it but maybe not some professionals are very biased oh my gosh one of my friends went to a therapist who saw her, who saw her for one session one and I always tell my friends when you're going to go to a therapist get ready to fire your therapist for this reason and obviously like I love therapy but even I fired my first therapist so I told my friend she goes I went to this therapist one session and the therapist a therapy sessions are 45 minutes this like this person get their license revoked. 
this person by the end of the session, like, or the, like a little bit through the session was like, yeah, it definitely sounds like, you know, there was definitely some like molestation. And she was like, wait, what? What are you talking about? I'm talking about like my life and I'm stressed about job. What are you talking about? And she, he goes, well, probably from your father. Right. And she was like, what are you talking about? And not even to her. Right. It was like, what are you talking about? And then he was like making up stuff about molestation and how it runs in families and how people get molested by their fathers. And she was like, OK, I don't know who molested you, but like I'm here to talk about work and stress and my life and everything else. Like, I don't know why we're talking about molestation. And he was like, well, it's very common, you know, for fathers to molest their children. And she was like. Fired. And I was like, oh, fired. No, you can't just be out here. Session one being like molestation it's like the people that are like christians and they're like gay like they're always like porn is the issue it's like some people have one like guesses for everything oh overbearing mother oh you must be watching porn it's like what what no oh so weird dude i was like you can't just go around telling people shit crazy bro crazy period of exploration was the quality of each of us turning like away from the other <gasps> yes stephanie said that happened to my friend the therapist tried to convince her she was molested and she didn't doesn't just didn't remember Li literally that's what i'm saying therapists are just people but that's why your friends are also just people guys focus if therapists are just people your friends are certainly just people so if you're going to go to your friends for relationship advice might as well go to a therapist so they don't have like the bias of knowing you, but they might have their own personal bias, right? So, okay. Again, like if therapists are people, your friends are certainly people. And looking for something to complete. Y yeah. You know what I mean? And also more like on an emotional level, to me, it's not too much like of a, like we're not, just we're not looking for titillation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not just doing this because we're horny. It's just yeah, right, right. It's yeah, what yeah. we thought would be better for <laughs> our relationship. <laughs> yes. You're so cute. You're so shy. Oh, so yeah, I'm blushing now. <laughs> so we haven't dated together, but we've introduced yeah, yeah. each other to people. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's kind of a, you know, an interesting road to hoe, isn't it? Mm. To oh. hoe. <laughs> hoe is the key word. All I had to do was look at you, and I knew you were going to say something like that. <laughs> You're so lovely. You really mm. are. So overall, how do you think it's affected our relationship? I think it's been very positive for us because it just brought more lightness and understanding yeah, yeah, yeah. to our relationship and kind of yeah. like renewed yeah, our love yeah, for each other yeah, in a yeah. way and for me it was good to have all the extra moral support yeah, yeah. and i've been putting less pressure on you when you say moral support i think you mean emotional support yeah yeah then like the, well i mean it could be the same thing but i'm just trying to think of it in terms of more specifically what that means has, has meant for you yeah i just don't believe it i don't believe them i think they're breaking up eventually yeah emotional yeah, i thought yeah. that was what that meant yeah maybe it's just a language no thing. no no it's fine i just is i'm just a, being no I'm, a, I'm just exploring saying? it no it's an absolutely <sighs> fine moral it, it is the same that exists in english what moral sport yeah oh very much oh, so. okay yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm sorry <laughs> I, I was wondering oh is that is not that a not, thing oh my god <laughs> they're really friendly and they're really nice with each other but i really i really i just think running away from your problems is a mistake and i like Again, why do you feel emotionally insecure in your relationship? Why do you need more emotional support from lovers? Why can't you get them from friends? Like, why do you have to fuck your emotional support? Get a dog. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Or just be honest. Like, just say, hey, dude, I kind of want to be with other people. If she came out and she said, hey, I actually think I want to date other people. You're like, oh, my gosh, why? And I'm like, honestly, I think I would thrive in an open or, or polyamorous relationship. It's like, oh, I think I think I'm more of a vibe there. It's like I'm saying it, I'm doing it to add to my life, not to fix something that's missing. Because getting emotional support, you can literally get that from friends or dogs or like, what does that mean, emotional support? You know what I mean? I just, I don't believe them when they say that because then it sounds like a cope. Hey, can we open up our marriage because I need emotional support? And it's like, what are those two, th how do those two things relate? You know, how do those two things relate? Sorry. Yeah, and we've just been able to connect more. And again, maybe it's just me. And I'm allosexual, bros. I could go twice a day all day, let me tell you. 
you know, but literally if my partner and I like couldn't have sex starting today, tomorrow, like, okay, who cares? We have a vibrator. We have things. So if my partner wasn't feeling it, if he was like, I never want to have sex again, I'll be like, oh, well, first of all, why? Because we might need to see like a doctor. But if he genuinely had a condition and like all of a sudden he couldn't have sex anymore with me, it's like, okay, like I'm still not going to want it from somebody else. Like, I don't know, but that's me, right? I don't, again, doing things because there's a problem can be good or bad. Like if you notice your life is a mess, maybe start getting it on track. If you notice your marriage is failing, maybe get it on track. Don't open it up. Bryson says it feels like the chemistry of a nice acquaintance. I don't know how else to put it. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. They Ingrid says they seem more like friends. Mm. Kashmir says it sounds like they're relying more on logic than their true feelings. Yeah, it sounds like they're not being, well, they might not know. Like they might actually be completely unaware about what the real issue is, which is why, again, a counselor would help or even a Brittany would help. If I could just ask them some questions, that would help. I just don't think this is the why. Like, I just don't think this is the why. Like, because we've been doing fun things yeah, together yeah. and apart. And yeah. it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just been good, I think. And I think the main thing that we took out of it is that we love each other. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, things might change. Our yeah. relationship is different now, but we love each other yeah, just yeah. as much. Yeah, you're literally like my family. I mean, oh, you are my family. Yeah. <laughs> See how they're trying to justify it to us? You see how they're trying to justify to us? We're literally like family. Bitch, you're married. You've been married for f four years or something. What do you mean you're family? We know. You sh Do you know? Why are you telling us? We know your family. What are you talking about? We love each other just as much. You're married. I hope so. I hope you're like family. You're married. But like also, why are you just... Don't tell us. We know. Do you know? I mean, you'll always be, you yeah, know, true. and I, you know, my love for you is forever. Oh, for you too. See, it doesn't feel romantic. It feels, yeah, it kind of feels like best friends that dated, sort of. Huh. I sent that into your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think we covered everything. If you have any more questions, let us know in the comments. And, and more to come. More yeah. to come, yeah. Uh, we figured this is something people are curious about, so we'll yeah, talk yeah. more about it if you want. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching and for being so supportive. Exactly. And okay, so now, okay, this is the video, and everyone's pretty mean to them in the comments, right? You know, don't confuse the dependence you have for love. You're opening your marriage up because you aren't enough for each other. You're in the hab uh, you're in a habit you don't want to break. It's safe and comfy, but this ain't it. You're done. Sometimes love isn't enough. It's okay to let the marriage go and keep the friendship. You know, everybody's um, everyone's always like poor Eileen. But did anyone ever stop to realize that two people are in the relationship? And I seriously doubt Julia is the only one with flaws. Of course. I respectfully disagree. You don't need to have sex with someone else to get emotional support. Obviously, you can get emotional support from friends and family. You can open your marriage if you want, and you don't even have to explain it to people because it's your life and you're free. But emotional support is not a good reason. Exactly. Okay. This ain't this ain't it, sis. I like you both, and I generally wish you both the absolute best. Mm -hmm. If your wife isn't enough for you, regardless of age and relationship, she's not your person. You're trying to make something work that doesn't work anymore. It's going to end one way uh, in one way of you getting hurt. And I fear oh, one of you getting hurt and I fear it will be Eileen. You're in different stages of life, heightened by age difference you two have. But you also have known that since you married or when you married her. It's like people are pretty critical. OK, so let's continue this video. We're still uh, we're only six minutes in of a 22 minute video and this is her reaction to that video oh wait let's pull it back up again sorry this video was posted two weeks ago and has 800 comments and 58,000 views this video was posted three days ago has 1800 comments so a thousand more comments and three posted three days ago <gasps> oh my god Okay, we got to watch the video and then we're going straight to the comments. I can already feel it already. I mean, it was. And then, like, I wanted to have a proper fancy wedding and stuff. So 
because it was my idea and my thing like she didn't care so much about party and stuff like I I paid for the whole wedding and uh like at that time I spent the savings I had Ooh, see so they got married and they didn't combine finances she's saying I wanted a fancy wedding so I paid for it my husband and I we like share money for this reason because again like when we got married I was like what kind of wedding do you want like it's an affair well it's not a fair it's a it's an affair together but we planned it together and we both were like we want something small and private and honestly like we're open to just going to the courthouse with a couple of friends and family and we're like great and then we picked out our clothes and went shopping and had a lot of fun and then bam we went to the courthouse and did our thing and it was so pretty croatian courthouses oh this courthouse was beautiful it was literally it looked like it was gorgeous. I actually, I might have a video of it somewhere because I, sh I, th I should have filmed more in the, it was so beautiful. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I just, I felt so, it was so gorge, you know, I thought it was going to be like an office or something, but it was literally beautiful. Very like, just look old timey, ancient European. It was gorge. Anyways, um, I can't remember how much we spent on our wedding, but I think total, I don't know, like including my dress like three thousand dollars maybe i don't know maybe less i don't know how much it was two thousand dollars i don't know it doesn't matter it was like nothing and then on top of that um like of course technically i mean our money is our money but like technically i make money and he's a stay-at-home partner so like but we it's our money you know what i mean there's no like i paid for our wedding it's like we paid for our wedding oh we made this much this month oh we made this because look Without his support, I couldn't be working as much as I do. He does it. He made us. Oh, my gosh. He made us the greatest dinner today. We had burgers. It was delicious. I posted the pictures on Discord. Gorge. But, like, I can't do anything without. Guys, I couldn't. I already can't keep up with work. Could you imagine if I also had to, like, take care of my house and, like, cook and do all these other things that I only do when I want to versus, like, he just handles everything? Like, I can't keep up with my work as it is. You know what I mean? So, again, I don't like the whole like I paid for my wedding. It's like, why didn't you guys both pay for your wedding? Do you not combine money? And that's fine if you don't, but why not? Like on the wedding. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Selena. Your dress was beautiful. I, I love my dress. I It will be in a video soon because I want to wear it every so often, but it's, I love my dress. Thank you. But that was fine. That was like my dream to have a wedding like that. And it was, I don't regret it at all. It was the most beautiful wedding. I loved it. It was the best day ever. And all the trips we did, like our honeymoon, like all, all the trips, uh, everything was always me. <laughs> and while, while that was going on, everybody like still calling me a gold digger, but I was why like, is she all the crying? nice things. Like, why is she crying? This is, perf this is like Trisha performative, right? Or like go to therapy. Cause like, why is she crying? Who cares? <clears throat> you put out the video, you're salacious. She's been, you know why I never watched Julia? Cause all her content feels like clickbait. The reason I never got into her content, even like, even years ago was because it always felt like it was me, 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 clickbait, clickbait. It's like, if you're going to sensationalize your life, which you obviously do for views, is this also like you sensationalizing the tears for views? You know, you know what I mean? Like, it just feels so fake. Like, I don't believe this. Things we did, all the, the trips, it was always just me. And of course I wouldn't say, I didn't say that to defend myself at that time because I don't want to throw my wife under the bus. You know, but you will see the things progress from there. It wasn't just that. So then. Feel oh, so these are problems. Oh, she's not. Oh, she's like talking shit right now. Oh, she's about to talk shit. I thought she was trying to defend herself to the comments, but she's actually about to talk shit. She's about to talk shit about Irene. Months after we got married, we came to um, the U.S. That was my first time in the U.S. And we came here to visit friends and Eileen's family. And Eileen. some of Eileen. you that have been here for a while might remember this, but some of you that are newer probably don't know because I since deleted the videos that I posted about this. When we landed in the US, Eileen got arrested because she had had a, a warrant out for her arrest for an unauthorized use of a vehicle for about 15 years. And uh, she had told me that someone might stop her and warn her about that. Wait a second. <sighs> Wait a second. Oh. Discord says the lesbian clickbait reminds me of Stevie Bobby and Ariel Scarcella. 
literally both people I knew in the past. I've been to Stevie Bobby's house and Arielle used to do stuff for my YouTube channel slash we used to be friends. And I'll tell you this right now and I'll say this to their fucking faces. Stevie Bobby is such a fake bitch. And also like God bless her. And I know you're on a journey. You're doing what you're doing. I get it. And Arielle, I don't know why you turned so conservative. It's such a waste of brain space. Please goddamn read a book. Like, oh my God, what is waste of space? And P.S. on Sunday for Discord, we're going to watch a video with Julia and Arielle on Jubilee. But literally all these fake ass people, literally I love them so much. I can't, I can't stand YouTubers. They're such pussies. They all talk such mad shit on the internet and none of them will face each other. And when they do, it's always like with a third party because everyone's too pussy to realize they don't know what they're talking about. Nobody knows what they're talking about. Literally, Stevie Bobby was making content for kids and literally talking about blood play with them because she's like, quote unquote, in BDSM. Her BDSM is very unethical. Okay, she practices unethical BDSM. I said it. Okay, and I'm fucking sick of it. Or at least she did years ago when I was like uh, at her house. Okay. And that's why we fucking please. Okay, bitch. She knows what she did. Anyways, the point is, is like all these people are fucking okay. Just like fucking fucking sick of it bro and this shit feels fake as shit and dangerous to me too i hate it because she was late uh, returning a rental car and i thought it was like you know she was one day late and then uh, it would be yeah what's unauthorized vehicle use like just someone might stop her somewhere i didn't i don't really i didn't know how things worked and then well, she just told me that i was like okay but i actually didn't know that she hadn't been back to the u.s for 15 years and i didn't know it was like a proper warrant so as soon as we landed uh, she got arrested and it was so so traumatic because i was completely like alone in a new country again and uh, my wife that you know we, i just married got arrested and i didn't know what to do like it's like 90 day fiance where there's like an age gap and it's weird and then the older person's kind of a loser not that you know what i mean but like driving a stolen or unregistered vehicle what does that mean they don't when that happens they don't tell you anything like she stole a rental car taking the person like what's gonna happen i, I was like oh, what the heck they see how she's bringing up shit from years ago so they never got past it break up this relationship isn't going to last you can't talk shit about your partner to the internet if you do that it's over trust me i've done it so many times <laughs> literally i'm telling you i'm telling you if you talk shit to the internet about your partner you're going through you're gonna break up you're gonna you can't come back from that you're just it's it's undignified you can't come back from it you talk shit to a bunch of strangers on the internet about the person you're supposed to trust and love the most you're not coming back from that if you literally if i ever talk shit about my partner on the internet just know i'm heading for a divorce it's just like it's you can't do it it doesn't work and she's bringing up shit from years ago to be like oh i my partner's not perfect either uh, they properly like put her in handcuffs and everything it was horrible Ooh, horrible sexy. horrible oh, no. so sexy. as soon as that happened as much as i wanted to <laughs> disappear and like i always had anxiety and stuff what spaced out how do you know that did i miss that part of the story she didn't return it on time and to avoid fees she just left it at the lot and left what so she had like a rental car she didn't properly return so my anxiety was like through the roof and i didn't know what to do i didn't have any money left because i spent it all on the wedding but i was like at this time I just need to be strong you should not spend all the money you have on a wedding it's okay to like do the wedding later you know pull myself together and um, deal with it i went through the, the process of like finding out what was going on and what's my rule if you love someone enough, never put them in the position to see you taken away in handcuffs or to see them arrested on your behalf. Okay? 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 If you love somebody truly, do not put them in a position to see you being taken away in handcuffs or to see or to have them be taken away in handcuffs on your behalf. Okay? There was a whole video about it. She took it down. She didn't pay the fees for using it longer than agreed. Oh, okay. Okay. Ah, see, ca see, Kashmir and I, mm -hmm. even talking shit to your friends about your partner, it's, it's overtime. That's what I mean. If you're going to your partner, I'm sorry, if you're going to your friends to talk shit about your partner and complain and gossip about them to your friends, it's over. The relationship's over. It's over. You can do the on again, off again thing. You can do the whole, it's over. Like you're breaking it up. Like you're breaking up. You know what I mean? That's what I mean when I say like, I do not, if I have marriage problems for whatever reason, we're going to a counselor. 
I'm not taking my shit to my friends because that's basically the end of the friendship or the relationship. The relationship's going to end. If you're going to your friends to talk shit about your partner, just be real. You're looking for a way out and that's great. Do that. Leave. And bailing her out and my- Yeah, why didn't she ever deal with it? Thank you, Breakfast. Like, what the fuck? She avoided dealing with it? Madness. Exactly. How irresponsible. What? Friends. I have some lovely friends. But also, like, I get it. People make mistakes. They really helped me a lot at that time. Like, Laura, Danny and Pam, and Fazana. They helped me so much financially and emotionally and logistically. But basically, I had to borrow money from a lot of people to bail her out and more importantly to pay for the lawyer fees oh wait i got the lawyer i didn't have money to pay the lawyer so i had to borrow from my friends it was like thousands wow what is i love this story thanks girl the lawyer tried to get her out of jail but then what is this when they were gonna release her they found out there was another warrant out for something else to do with a car like a, a lease that Oh, I'm not gonna get into detail about this stuff now, like, because that, that's not what the video is about. But anyway, there was another warrant that I had no clue about, and she said she also had no clue about. But yeah, when they tried to release her, there was another one, so that delayed the whole thing. And then we ended up having to stay in America for two months to sort out the whole thing. Because, like, I used to think when you bail someone out, that's it, like, they're free. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how naive I was. Uh, that's not how it works, you still have to go to court after messy 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 does anyone know where that quote is from if you know where that quote is from we have the same childhood but messy 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 to try to like clear your name and be set free type of thing so you don't go back to jail or anything and so that you can clean your record so it was quite expensive you know the lawyer fees because there were two cases going on for the two warrants and we had to be here like two months like going to court and everything to sort it, to sort, sort this out and like i had to buy all the tickets again to go back to england and because we were supposed to be here only for two weeks i stay here because i'm in new york at the moment too yeah there's a completely new background <laughs> um and my friends Anyway, long story short, I spent thousands and thousands of dollars. That's not even her kitchen. I was liking the cabinets for nothing. Bailing her out, setting her free, clearing her record and all that stuff. And through all that, I blamed myself so much because I was the one who had suggested the trip to America uh, when she had told me that there was this outstanding thing, even though I didn't know it was a warrant, but I blamed myself so much. I was like, oh my God. And she was also like not completely happy with the lawyer at the time and i just the truth about our marital problems i'm 11 minutes in what is this fucking story i can't wait to read the comments thought, oh my god everything i'm doing is wrong and it was i was, it was wait i want to see her hair change so much from the cut where to america myself clearing her record and all that stuff and through all that i Girl, she just put it behind her ear blamed myself so much because I was the <sighs> one who had suggested the trip to America uh, when she had told me that there was this outstanding thing even though I didn't know it was a warrant but I blamed myself so much I was like oh my god <sighs> and she was also like not completely happy with the lawyer at the time and I just thought oh my god everything I'm doing is wrong and it was I was it was awful oh what does the Maiden, did you cheat? Maiden, 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 maiden. Did you cheat? Did you Google maiden? Maiden, did you Google? <laughs> maiden, did you go? Wait, Jessica, did you say it too? Wait, Jessica, did you say it too? Did we literally? Yes. Yes, yes, Jessica, yes. Oh my gosh, stop it, stop. Did we have the same, did all of us have the same childhood? Yes, that is it, baby. Nope, that's it, baby. Yes, Jessica Mean Maiden, let's go. Jessica Mean Maiden, okay, Jessica Mean, Jessica said it first, I saw it, Jessica. That's literally, I say that all the time. I'm always like messy, messy, messy. We probably watched that Frosty Snowman cartoon 
I don't know, a thousand times in my childhood. It was every year we watched the same group of Christmas movies. Like my family's very nostalgia. Like we watched the same group of movies and that was one of the shows slash movies we would watch. That, let's go. That's so fun. I, see, don't you love it? So, okay, we grew up in the same, it was like watching the, uh, the Swan Princess growing up a thousand times. I shared a clip of it on Instagram and someone was like, what movie is that? And I was like, it's the Swan Princess, like the cartoon. It's so good. Like what? It's the best non-Disney Disney movie, right? Wait, Swan Princess isn't Disney or is it Disney? No, it's not Disney. It's, it's Bluth, right? Or is it Bluth or is it Disney? Oh, see, I always forget because Bluth and Disney are like the same. Troll in Central Park, Thumbelina. It's like, uh, uh, but yes, messy, messy, messy. Let's go. Isn't that so nice? I love it. Now I feel like we're all besties. I should go for a coffee. See? It's like, oh my gosh, you know stuff from my childhood. So like we're the same. Oh, I love it. I love, I'm telling you, there's, mm, that is community. See, now I feel seen just a little bit, just a little bit. This is what I mean. People want to feel this, but all the way. I love this. I'm like, oh my gosh, cool. You know, mm. me too, Maiden. I have a brother who like memorizes movies after watching them. And one time he would quote it unnecessary them incessantly and messy, messy, messy is one of the lines. My farm brother, all he does is quote movies. He's like the best quoting. So all the siblings, that's all we do is we quote, we quote movies and we guess them and I'm the worst guesser. And everyone's just like my farm brother all the time is he's like, what's this from? What's this from? What's this from? And I'm like, <sighs> It almost gets exhausting, <laughs> right? Oh, no, Selena. I feel FOMO. Stop. Jessica says, I feel you know me better now, too. See? See? I love it. I love it. Okay, let's get back to this crying lesbian who's obviously doesn't have, she doesn't know where messy, messy, messy is from. And then people found out that she got arrested online and started gossiping around oh. about it and sending so much hate. And then I had to make a video mm. addressing it and explaining the situation. How did people find that out? What the fuck? And I posted that video. That's not on my channel anymore. I took it down since then. But I made that video. And then people started looking into it and then finding all these other things like that she had different names before and what? then she had been uh, arrested in the UK before and all this different Yo, she a fugitive, right? She like a gangster, right? Thanks. Which, by the way, changing her name is not illegal, but uh, I'm not, I don't wanna, that's, the video is not about her. They're gonna break up. They're gonna break up and they're never gonna talk to each other again. There's no way. This is insane. This is insane legal stuff maybe we can do another video about that another day but that, that's not what it's about but basically that went kind of wild because i was finding out all these random things some true some made up but i was finding out all these random things from haters well if not haters just like random people and i was like what the hell so it was a really scary time so then we got back to the uk everything was fine her name was cleared everything was good but I was left with this huge debt that I had to pay back to. Is this still five, six years ago when she first got to the US? When did she go to the US? When did they, I don't get it. Is this like, in the last video, we're family. <laughs> Wait, oh my gosh. This reminds me of a story I saw. Oh, I, I gotta talk to you guys about it later, but like, because we'll derail the whole thing. But like, I love that she's like, oh, we're family. And then boom, this, it's like, what is happening? Our relationship is great. It's better than it's been two weeks later. What? <gasps> Frosty the snowman. April, let's go. April guessed it. She's behind on the stream, but she guessed it. To all of my friends and my credit card and everything. So then I said to her, I, I know we agree that, you know, you're retired and everything because you're helping me out with the channel and, you know, that's work too. But I was like, would you mind just until I paid this debt, would you mind getting... Just like a part-time job, just temporarily, maybe as, you know, anything, just like some reception work or anything. This is, t see, you need to go to a counselor for this, bro. Money problems, balancing out bills. Hey, can you get a part-time job? Like, I am uncomfortable, bro. So was Eileen, Irene, I keep forgetting her name already. 
was she working her own job and is living off retirement and then this girl like promised to work but needs the fun i don't was she planning to like take care of a stay-at-home partner which by the way like some of us don't mind doing that but like like that just to help out because i had was she hoping to be the dependent on the older person and then the older person actually became kind of one like what's happening is that now because of what happened in america come on eileen okay noted america. and she said no and that really broke my heart and made me feel like i have to deal with everything alone so she said no because at the time she was working on her own youtube channel and it was going really well uh, but she wasn't like making money on it yet and um we had like a few arguments about it because I was like, when I started my channel, like I didn't make money on it straight away either. Like, and I had other jobs, like I worked in retail, I worked in all sorts of jobs. But she said, no, I'll just like focus on the- Yeah, wait, she paid Eileen's legal fees. So is Eileen the one who's always been using her for money? I'm just so confused. So Eileen, I, what is it from? Like what what youtube and soon i'll you know make money on it because she was getting like really good views uh, on her channel at the time but then like i was editing all her videos for her and that's the part that takes the longest you know editing takes so much longer than filming and uh, i was trying to jessica so the sugar baby was the secret sugar mama maybe what a confusing, toxic... Am I allowed to say it's toxic now? Or is everyone going to come for me and be like, why is Brittany Simon talking about my relationship being toxic? Because you made it content, bitch. You made it content. Literally, why are we making our lives content if we don't think, hello, talk about my life. Please put me in your thumbnails. Do I look cute? Like, what are we talking about here? This is crazy. Teacher editing and stuff, but like she wouldn't post if I didn't edit. But that was supposed to be like her work oh fuck <clears throat> so that put a strain in the relationship too and then uh, at one point i said i'm not i'm just not gonna edit anymore and then that's when she sort of like stopped posting on her channel which is a shame because it was a really good channel she has such good story times like she's so intelligent and well spoken and she has so many good stories like i i think if she had carried on with her channel she would have millions of subscribers now because she's such an interesting person and it, yeah it's it was just a shame but i just literally didn't have the time to edit my stuff and her stuff and i didn't think it was fair so then like i finished paying everybody thankfully but that definitely put a strain on the relationship and i started to like what's the word resent yeah, I started to resent her a bit. Oh, yeah, also when that was happening, while I was trying to pay the debt, my my granddad passed away, and then I didn't even have money to buy a ticket to go back to Brazil to to go to his funeral because I, I was in debt. And well, that sounds like... This is what I'm saying. This, your life, being the... Mm, man? Mm, mm, mm. This is not good. But you're like, again, okay. Serious talk again. Okay. I know I'm like making a lot of serious talk. Karma is not you do good things, you get good things. Karma is your life is a reflection of what you've put into it. And her karma is not great right now because she's what she's putting into her life is what it is. You can blame everybody else. You can say it's everybody else. You can say it's everyone else, but it's us. We date toxic. We date abusive. We allow people in our lives. We keep it going. We allow the cycles to continue. We're not breaking generational curses. We're not actually making differences. We continue habits. Like she said, she's been on YouTube for 10 years. Like she said, she's been in this relationship for five or whatever it's been, right? <clears throat> like she's the one who got married. She's the one who did her things. She can blame Eileen all she wants. But like, at some point, she's got to blame herself. She chose this life, as did Eileen. So they need to figure that out. You need to say out loud, I chose this life. And then she lied to us. Two weeks ago, she posted a video about their open relationship and saying their relationship is good and everything's been great. And then she makes this video. This is a messed up, toxic, and very destructive person.
and she needs to get help because it's very obvious that she's either lying to us, lying to herself, lying to her partner, or all these things are happening at the same time, but there's still a lot of deception, right? This is insane. We just saw a video acting like they were the happiest couple, saying they're family and all of this fake shit, okay, which might be true in some way, only to come here and do this. Messy, messy, messy. And that, that was also something like, that I'll never get back. And then after that, like a few months after that, when I had finished paying everybody, I got offered to go to Turkey to get my teeth done. But like the teeth were- Why do these celebrities go to Turkey to get their teeth done? Everybody knows it turns out awful free but i had to like get the tickets in the, the hotel and i asked her to come with me because i always wanted to like travel i literally have heard so many horror stories from these like these e-celebrities going to turkey to get their teeth done because they always do like the worst pot like to get promoted but i heard they get the worst surgery i don't know i've heard bad stories but like i guess you do you her by the way i pranked my sister the other day like a small prank like two second prank and i was like i'm getting veneers and she was like Brittany, it's going to change your whole style. You're going to look totally different. What are you doing? And I was like, I'm just, girl, please. And she goes, oh, never mind. Like, I can't even get a deviated septum. Like, I can't even, hello? And don't get me wrong. Turkey is some of the best plastic surgery for sure. But I always hear the e-celebrities specifically that get chosen by these companies. Like, it's not always the best companies. You know, rumors have it. And she loves traveling too. But like I said to her, it's going to have to be a bit of a budget trip this time. Like mm -hmm. unlike the previous ones, like when we had gone to Brazil and stuff, we stayed at some really nice hotels and everything. So I said to her, this one might have to be a bit of a budget thing. Like, and then I was looking up some hotels that were a bit, they were a bit grimy, you know, but I was like, I'm, you know, just going there to get my teeth done. It's not supposed to be like a fancy holiday and it's, um, I don't want to like spend a lot of money now because I want to build up my savings again. But then she said if it was like that, she would rather not go. I'm sorry, isn't the surgery like six, ten thousand dollars Isn't it like, it's not even worth it. Like it's not even worth getting it for free. You might as well just wait and like, is it even worth paying for the plane ticket? Isn't it worth just like not getting it for free and doing it later or like not doing it at all? But I really wanted her to go. Like, free stuff is not enough for me to move. Unless you're paying me or making it easy, I'm not getting up, bro. Also, I ended up booking, like, a five-star hotel. And then she went. But it also broke my heart a bit that, like, she wouldn't go with me if it was a shitty place. Well, do you ever think that's because she's in her 60s and eventually when you're old, like, you just want a nice place? Slash, maybe just, like, don't get it done, though? But, like, also, like... I don't know like do you guys see like people are like Brittany has no more grace for certain people well hello it's exhausting like how many times are we gonna go through this cycle boring like Jesus figure it out you're fucking up and it's not Eileen's fault it's yours for being in this situation and not realizing it just like all of us have to face each other it's our reason for picking our shitty boyfriends and girlfriends guys it's us we're the problem because regardless of what they did two wrongs don't make a right just because somebody was shitty to you doesn't mean you're exempt from being the person who made the choice to be there. Like, again, like, dating toxic is just a reflection of you and your choices. Ultimately, that's what it's about when you're having a true relationship with your consciousness. And I don't mean to victim blame. That's not what I'm doing. That's separate, right? When people hurt you, they're so responsible for what they do. But you staying, you involved, you picking, you justifying, you coping, that's all on you. That's you. I'm sorry. And you're allowed to say like, oh, damn, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. Or you can go through, you know, whatever journey you have to go through to accept it. But like, that's you. <laughs> <clears throat> and then after that, because I, I resented that turkey thing, I started going on trips on my own because I was like, Honestly, it's so expensive <laughs> to like pay for travel for two people. So I just and so the teeth. So basically, she didn't get the teeth for free. You know what I mean? Like if it's like basic finance one hundred and one. Okay, she's failing. Graham Stephan would give her an F. Grant Caleb Hammer, Caleb Hammer would give her an F. She's. It's not worth it. 
if that's how like you know if that's how it's gonna be i'm just gonna travel on my own so that's why i've traveled on my own so much and i also yeah and then i got so much hate for traveling on my own too because i would post anything and people would be like oh you're a terrible wife you're just doing all these things without your wife why isn't eileen going with you you don't care about her you're just like leaving her at home but i couldn't exactly come out and say no i'm not i'm just not taking her because all this stuff has happened and it's unfair <laughs> because i didn't want to paint her in a bad light but <laughs> i'm so tired of it and then the pandemic started and everything and then we were stuck uh, at home like everybody else but there was all this tension from all these things that happened before building up in me and i had so much like resentment and yeah and sadness in my heart and then at that time i also found out that she was taking out credit cards without telling me and like maxing them out and stuff and that was all eileen's crazy bro this is a crazy girl break up fraud credit card fraud everything marriage fraud oh my, oh my god this is crazy if this is true this is crazy i think crazy she a fugitive she a felon she wild bro oh my god uh this is a huge abuse of of, of trust huge uh no uh Ooh, I'm sorry. My partner and I discuss like before we spend money, before we do things. Like again, it's like a balance. So obviously we like we spend ten dollars, fifteen dollars. I don't care. But if you're gonna spend like a lot of money, like you better fucking talk to me. But also like, oh my god, if this is all true, this is awful. They're both awful. I'm both. I'm rejecting both of them. Break up. Oh my god, you stayed after credit card fraud, and you're like, you know what I'll do. Instead of breaking up, what if we just fuck other people? <laughs> like, what? What? You, I'm so sorry. Listen, to, as somebody who has been in shitty relationships in her 20s, thank God it didn't move forward. And this girl's only 29. Girl, you're about to hit 30. Your life's about to change. Divorce. Move on. Never talk to this woman again. Move your life forward. Tell Eileen I wish her the best. Good luck, girl. Like, you're retired. Have fun. But like absolutely not. Auntie Simon says, Auntie Brittany says, absolutely not. Oh my God. I'm so sick of these fucking toxic ass YouTubers being like, this is my relationship and look, it's shitty. Move the fuck on. Move the fuck on. It's a shitty relationship. Move on. Jesus also fuck. Also really, really upsetting. She has a bit of an addiction with things like that. So it's not really her fault. But yes, yes, yes. We're all victims of our life. She can deal with it on her own. You need to deal with your trauma on your own. It's a, it's a tough thing, you know, on a partner. And so at some point I even said to her, like, if you don't cancel these credit cards, like I'm going to leave. And she didn't. She didn't cancel them. Hello? Hello? I didn't leave either. So, <laughs> and then I <laughs> Literally, that's what I'm saying. Like, you all are messy. Messy, messy, messy. That's what I'm saying. You do you, but this is not a soulmate. I'm talking, guys, it is better to be single and thrive than end up like this wait for your soulmates or meet them when necessary or live a life where you're just fulfilled anyways. I'm telling you right now, there are really good people in the world. They are incredibly wonderful, kind people, but you're not going to attract them if you're also a piece of shit dysfunctional. Hello, we have to be the things that also transform into the person who's ready for that relationship. You have to be ready for it. Not that you're unworthy of love. I'm not saying that, right? That's not what this is about. This is literally about being healthy enough to attract healthy. You have to be healthy enough to attract healthy. Just healthy enough, not perfectly healthy. Just, there's a line. There's a line, okay? You just gotta get over the line to be basically healthy, to attract basically healthy, and we can move forward, right? You have to be just healthy enough, okay? This is a level of dysfunction that is so unnecessary. It's just so unnecessary in your life. It's so unnecessary. I had all this like resentment building up in me during the pandemic and we were stuck together. And I think... See, if you're in the pandemic and you hated who you were stuck with, really examine that. 
because I was stuck with my brothers and I had a very nice pandemic. I made the most money I had made in a long time. I chilled. I had the best streams. I had the best like YouTube stuff. I was thriving during the COVID pandemic just because I was with people I loved. So like, again, if you're not thriving during the pandemic, great moment to say like, why didn't I want to be stuck in a room with this person? If my partner and I are currently living like it's the pandemic and we're loving it, like literally let's see how long we end up doing this for, but like we're kind of living like it's the pandemic and we're loving it. So again, like what's happening here? Okay. What's happening here? From that moment on, <sighs> I was unfair on her because I was a bit like passive aggressive. You know, I would do like some comments like about her, like staying at home and not working. And I, would, I sort of would make jokes about things like that, but they weren't really jokes. Which is shitty and it's, yeah, and I'm sorry for having done that and uh, we've spoke about it a lot, but I was a bit impossible to live with during the pandemic, I, I must admit, like, I... Okay, so some accountability, but also what she her partner did was really bad, but also we like accountability. I made it very hard on her and, like, she likes things very tidy in the house and because I was annoyed that I had no help and no, like, emotional support and stuff, Sometimes she would tell me, oh, can you put your stuff away? Because I'm a bit messy. And she's, she's right when she says, yeah, I'm a bit messy. And uh, I just would be like, no, and wouldn't put my stuff away because I was annoyed. Yeah, I just made her life. It's okay to break up. This is one of those moments, it's okay to get a divorce. There's too much, like, this is kind of abusive, right? You're allowed to break up. You're not bad people. Just because you're abusive doesn't mean you're even bad, right? I would say this is abusive, right? Like, I'm not saying you're an evil person, but I'm saying your levels of dysfunction are causing you both to abuse each other and yourselves, and you're not getting the proper help or intervention. Like, you can break up. You know what I mean? Like, I'm giving you permission. Get divorced. A bit shit. Yeah, so... So that's... that's those are our marital problems basically so yeah i just felt like i was so alone i just want to be like loved and um, i just want that emotional support that i feel like i haven't been getting and that's the truth it's not about sex at all it's not it's really not i know i've, I've made mistakes and i have did unpleasant things had unpleasant things to her but i have always tried to be a good wife and i think i've been I think I'm being a good wife for her. Did you think you were a good wife when you threw a little bitch fit about picking up your stuff? Did you? It's like people who are like, I'm a good husband. I serial cheat on my wife. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> what is your qual? Like, what is your what is your qualification for being a good husband or wife, ma'am? Okay, I'm a good wife. I tell all my friends and family about how shitty my husband is. It's like, that's what I'm saying. Do good wives and good husbands complain about their partners to their friends and family and to then after going through all this to see comments saying that i'm using her it's just a massive massive slap in the face like no knowing everything i've been through and all the financial burden that was put on me to then be called a gold digger oh there's someone vacuuming literally right outside the window i can't oh, hear seriously it. we barely can hear it keep going girl yeah like pouring my heart out in this person is making all this noise can you still hear me see see i don't know about that no we can barely hear it but also who cares keep going how noisy is it I totally forgot my train of thought. Oh, this video is so ratchet. Like the light is shit. There's no tripod. See how she cares? She's pouring out her heart, but she cares about production. This is why she feels performative. It's why I don't care. Who cares about the lighting, girl? You're pouring out your heart or are you not? No, you're going through a breakup. Move on. God, no bullet points to follow. No makeup. Um, <laughs> so people like get... Trisha paid this video because I'm sitting on the kitchen floor, but I just, I woke up at 5 a.m. and started reading all these comments on Instagram and I was like, you know, fuck this shit, fuck this shit. And I, then I called Eileen because she's in London and I was like, do you mind if I just open up about this? Because it's, it's just getting ridiculous. Eileen consented to this? <sighs> Damn. That's rough, bro.
that's rough. Oh my god, and please, 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 that goes without saying, I hope that's obvious, but please don't send my wife any hate, because she's my wife, I love her, and she made mistakes, I made mistakes, but we're trying to work on it. And the internet doesn't owe your marriage. Stop telling everybody about your marriage. Stop telling the internet about your marriage. Stop telling anybody about your marriage. If you have problems, see a counselor. Stop telling the internet anything about your marriage. Just, okay, share the good stuff. And any, just all of this is so private. Okay. And, um. Oh, where's the video? Oh. What just happened? That was so weird. I still have all the hope in the world that it's gonna work out and we're gonna get through this rough patch. <laughs> okay, thanks so much for watching. I'm gonna go eat a big bagel and cry. Have a very, very lovely day. Mwah. Girl, this is what I'm saying. Humans are gonna human, but this is what it is. When I see my friends or family or Cus uh, callers, whatever, anybody I know in my life who's this, I'm like, what are you going to do? Everyone's on a journey. This is their journey. This is canon. This is a part of their life. This is something they're either going to transform through and become a different person so they no longer do this, or they're going to stay in this loop for the next 10 years. They can stay in this loop for 10 years, 20 years. This moment could last a lifetime. And this is what I'm saying. I'm saying I know I come off the way I do. I really understand it. But I'm telling you as somebody who had to transform into a different version of herself to stop a cycle of toxicity, this is the cycle. It's on a spectrum and everyone has a different relationship with it. But this is a part of it. I'm going to tell you every awful thing about this relationship and I'm still going to hope it's going to work. That's now how it works. That is all nuance is rarely how it works. I'll say it that way. Okay. It is rarely how it works. And if you think you are the statistical anomaly for making it work, amazing. But I have never been that unique. Okay. And I wasn't. I wasn't the statistical probability. I was a normal statistic. I was one of the many on again, off again relationships that were always going to break up, that were always going to be permanently ended. And to be fair, I stopped the cycle because I transformed. Philosophy, therapy, physical relationship with myself and physical health. And then, you know, of course, I got a relationship with my job and my career and what I wanted. You know, it kind of breaks my heart, bro. But it is what it is. You like watch the cycle and you're like, maybe you'll get out, dude. I hope you get out. I hope you get out, right? I wonder if Julia actually has borderline. You know, there's a very high possibility um, because of the way she described her sort of like wishing I had a family. Um, but I don't know, you know. You live in your learn. Yeah, hopefully, Selena. I really hope. Like, honestly, as much as I, I'm just. But this is the thing. If Julia was a caller and she was in the cycle, I would just be like, hey, just a reminder, we're like seven months in and we're still in the same cycle. What's your philosophy? What's your why? What's your life like? What are you doing this for? What's the goal? I just feel like n neither of them know that. Neither of them know why they're doing anything they're doing, you know? <clears throat> and when I see it on the side of the internet, look, I don't care how messy you are. I believe in your ability to stop being messy. But you first have to start with, I'm messy. Oh, do I want to identify as a messy person? I used to be so messy. And now that I've been clean from being messy for so long, it is a very good life and a very different life, but it is, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with it. Like I, there's a lot more responsibility that comes with being less messy. And I will say that that's probably a part of why the transformation is so hard because it feels like you're already responsible. I can't pay for bills as Julia says, oh my gosh, I'm trying to travel. I'm trying to do these things. I can't afford anything. That's a different kind of messy that actually allows you to be irresponsible with everything so you can maintain the messiness and the dopamine and the stress and the conflict and the ups and downs. But when you stop being messy, now you actually do have to save and you have to be more responsible and you have to actually like think about whether or not you're traveling for things and now you have to think about how you're communicating and you have, you know what I mean? There's something about that that's really difficult. 
So if you're going to be messy, be messy on an island. Or you know what? These ladies are old enough and they're consenting. 29 and 65, I very much dislike that age gap. FYI. I really fucking hate it. I think it's trash. But you do you. You're adults. At this point, you know better. Or at least you should. But when Julia turns 30, she's going to hit a whole new era of possibilities. The 30s. And I hope they're better than her 20s. And for Eileen, who knows? Okay, now let's get to the nitty gritty of the comments section, bros. Let's look at these cool mates. Okay, so. <sighs> Julia, don't stay because you love her. Leave because you love yourself. No. Leave because it's the healthy thing to do. In this moment, love isn't that important. You have to logic your way through this, not emotions. Do I want to be healthy or unhealthy? Because you could love her and you could love yourself and still not leave. Because in this moment, I think it's more like healthy. Healthy loving yourself is very different than lovey, loving yourself toxically. And when you love yourself toxically, I'm not sure you know how to love yourself in a healthy way. So you have to logic your way into saying, no, do I want to stay toxic or do I want to be healthy? And if you don't want to be toxic, you have to leave. If you want to be toxic, you can stay. Okay, I think in this instance, I don't know if love is really the answer so much as like, nope, you have to logic your way out of this one. And then you have to be disciplined enough to leave. Let me tell you this. Okay, when I break up with somebody. Okay, or I have and I would get a call. Take me back. Take me back. Take me back. I had to stop answering my phone. I got to the point where I pretended to change my phone number and changed my voicemail message to convince people that I changed my number. And they would leave me messages like, I don't think this is your number anymore, but like if it is, call me. And eventually the call stopped. And eventually I didn't hear again. And eventually life moved on. And eventually I stopped thinking about them. And eventually like it was just not a part of my, it's like drugs, okay? For some drug addicts, they genuinely stop with the cravings. It's not a lifelong struggle for everybody in the same way. For a lot of people, the transformation takes them in a direction of like no longer having the craving which is really no longer having the relationship you had with yourself. Because remember, when you miss an ex, I don't think you miss, miss the ex. I think you miss the version of yourself that you were with the ex. You miss the feelings you got from it because they're a different kind of feeling. I don't even think you miss drugs when you miss drugs. You miss the feelings the drugs gave you. You miss the version of yourself on drugs. You know, I really believe that. Now, it's different for everyone, obviously. They're all going to have a different. But for me, I'm the category of person where I miss the version I am with people sometimes, um, but not anymore. Like I'm out of that cycle. But when I was in it, it felt like I was missing that version of myself, right? And now I read my old journals and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so grateful I'm out of that cycle. But here we are now in this new one where I can have the love of my life who's basically, oh my God, it's 3 a.m. He's definitely waiting for me. Holy shit. It's 3 a.m. and the love of my life is definitely waiting for me right now. My bad. Mm. It's okay. We're going to watch One Piece and eat a snack, I'm sure. Um, but again, it's like you miss that verse. So I don't think in this case, Julia is going to get this best advice to say like love yourself. She might not know how to love herself in a healthy way. So I would say like ask yourself if you want to be toxic or healthy and then make that decision, right? You know, um, you're being abused. Leave. You deserve better. Will you ever truly be able to trust her to have your back? If not, it's not worth spending time trying to fix it. You both have made mistakes, but there are different levels here. Your mistakes are truly, are honestly nothing compared to what she's done and she's still doing to you. You are being a perfect good wife, but is she? See, er, she's not being a perfectly good wife. Why are you gassing her up like that? You're, she's not being a perfectly good wife, right? I would say a good wife would love her enough to let her go. A good wife would get her help. A good wife would make her face the music or at least leave earlier, but she's not leaving. She's staying in the cycle. And I think that's a version of being a bad partner. If I came to my partner and I was in pains of addiction and cycles of abuse and he didn't get me help or he didn't say to me, hey, I love you. But if you literally do not get help, we are we are on that. We're in that place. We're in the danger zone. Right. I'd be like, holy shit. If he just left me to cycle through. Listen to her calling her partner being like, oh, let me call her and get her permission to post this video. Are they conning us? Are we being gaslit? Are they conning us? Right. Like, ma'am, now I know it's hard and it's difficult and it's not going to be perfect, but Julia is not the victim in this circumstance 
more than like she is the victim in some circumstances of the relationship, but she's also like a part of it. She's making it happen is what I'm trying to say, right? Julia, I'm so sorry for everything you've dealt with. You don't have to worry about painting her in a bad light because she seems to do that with herself with her actions. Again, Julia's also painting herself in a bad light. Why do, why, why, they're both bad. They're both bad. They're both bad. Emotional and financial abuse is abuse. Julia, if she was slapping you across the face, the domestic abuse, would you still fight to stay? A lot of people would. A lot of people would. You might love, and they might even report that they're happy. You might love her, but she's been financially abusive. It's okay to put yourself first, Julia. You deserve it. It's okay to choose to be healthy. I think Julia does put herself first. Can I be real? How is Julia not putting herself first in every story she tells? They're both putting themselves first. That's kind of the problem, right? My partner and I put each other first and ourselves first at the same time. So it's like we're equal. Again, we do 100, 100% in the relationship and we both put ourselves first and each other. So when I come to him and I make a request of him, he goes, hold on, can I do that without causing unnecessary harm to myself? Um, and if the answer is no, then it's like, I can't do that right now, but I can do it in 30 minutes when, when I do it in 30 minutes, I won't cause harm to myself. And I'm like, okay. And vice versa. If I go to him and he's like, Brittany, I need your attention. And I'm like, I'd love to give you that attention. But if I give it to you right now, it's actually going to be bad because I'm going into a, a call for work and I need to prioritize my work right now because that's my responsibility. But I can talk to you in 30 minutes. Is that okay? Is it an emergency? And he goes, it's not an emergency. I'll talk to you in 30 minutes. I go, great. Because again, like I owe it to myself to think about myself in that moment and to think about him and to say, what is the what is the practical thing to do right now? Because I can't just think about myself. I can't just say, um, I don't have time to think about you today, actually. I'm doing my thing today. No, I did not tell this man to sign up to do life with me just to ignore him. But at the same time, you have to think about yourself and your partner. And I, I put us on equal footing. Now, that wasn't always the case. I married this man. My other partners, we did not marry. Those were boyfriends and girlfriends. And then we were trying to figure out if we could date. Okay. You know, um, she maxed out your credit cards behind your back, but didn't pay you back for her legal issues. Did she max out her own or Julia's credit cards? Right. Just because of the way you and your partner communicate. So, so sounds so much like my partner, um, how my partner, how I communicate with my partner. It's so refreshing. Oh, that's so nice. Yay. Well, I, I picked up a lot of my communication style from honestly BDSM and poly relationships and books, because if you do ethical non-monogamy, there's a lot of really great books about it that teach you about language. And also, um, we just like heavily believe in consent, which is helpful. You know what I mean? So it's nice. It's nice. Julia, we love you. Julia, we love you. Julia, I love you. It's like, okay, can we please get some like balance? Girl, please. Your marriage is done. Find someone find someone who will love you how you deserve well I mean she kind of mm, what does that mean you know I think sometimes we are so toxic we 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 get the love we deserve unless it's like purely abuse like a child's perspective right because as an adult look if you're going around causing your partner emotional turmoil because you don't want to face yourself and you're both cheating on each other and hitting each other it's like okay what are we consenting to right it's all about like, what are we consenting to? And in the end, like, I'm not sure that Julia isn't also enabling Elaine's problems, right? Like it does feel that way. It, feel, it feels like they're enabling each other and that's why they can't let each other go. I assume they're kind of like codependent. You know, like I wonder if she, if she leaves, will she stay in America? Where will she go? It's just awful. From day one, Julia should have moved on. You know what I mean? Why are none of her friends telling, well, I guess they do. Like your friends do tell you to move on. Damn, this video only confirmed everything my partner and I already knew and could see over the years. We noticed the relationship deteriorating after you got married. Wasn't that a year into their relationship? Which is not, which is fine. I got married very quickly, but I also think it's my soulmate. You know, we knew it was not your fault. We never thought you were choosing to go away from um, Elaine. Or Elaine, what, Elaine? Okay, but figured for, Elaine, Eileen, Eileen, damn it. But figured for some reason she either couldn't or didn't want to go with you. Like the trips and stuff, I guess. Ugh. Just break up. Like, I can't, I can't. Yeah, Eileen sounds like a really toxic and abusive person. I definitely would break up with her. But also, like, again, it's hard for me. 
it's it sounds hard it's hard for me to think that both of them are without fault because Julia herself enables in the video she's crying in like she literally says like I gave her an ultimatum and I didn't leave you know she can't for whatever reason she's staying in this relationship and that's because she is a person who thinks she probably does like this is probably the best she can get or this is the only thing she deserves and that's what I'm saying I'm saying it's time to become a person that is healthy enough to attract healthy but also to choose being healthy, which isn't right away. It's like choosing to work out at the gym, guys. You don't go to the gym and work out 10 days in a row and you've lost 50 pounds. That's not how it works. You have to first choose to be healthy and then you got to do the work to get there. You don't become healthy because you've chosen it. You got to do the work to get there. You got to dispel old habits. You have to like literally break the construct of whatever your body and your mind and your consciousness thinks it, things have to go a certain way. Like you have to dismantle the person you are. You have to lay to rest the version of you that would date an Eileen or Julia. You have to literally do a funeral for yourself and that happens eventually. It's literally like going to the gym. You cannot show up to the gym, jump on the treadmill, and within a week get your ideal body weight and composition. You have to work on it every day and it gets harder. It does not get easier. When you work out at first, people always go like, oh, you get like beginner gains. When you work out, you realize how weak you are. When you start going to therapy or you try to be healthy, you realize how fucked up you are. And the good news is there's another side. And the good news, the good news, after a year or six months or whatever time it is for you, eventually you're actually going to have muscle and you're actually going to be strong and you're actually going to be capable. And that's what you do with mental health and that's what you do with introspection. You make the decision to be healthy and then you do the work. And the work is not something that happens overnight. And that's why most people give up because they do want that instant gratification. They want it to be. That's why the fantasy for people is I make it big. One invention, one idea, a billionaire. Oh my gosh. One date, Prince Charming, I'm in love. Everyone wants the instant gratification, which is fine. I get it. It's a good dopamine hit. It's just not going to last you. It's not going to fulfill your joy. You know? Thanks to the person on Discord who sent that to me. Interesting stuff. I definitely am glad we watched a couple of the videos to actually get a good idea of what's been happening. Like I said, I've been on again, off again on Julia's content for literally years because I'm a queer person who came up on YouTube. I did want to see what these people were doing. And I didn't like the way she sensationalized her relationship. I didn't love the way she made content. Everything seemed performative and fake to me. But also like, sounds like a typical YouTuber, right? If you're just here for clicks and views, it's not a bad business model. It gets you views. I mean, look at us right now. We're watching. We're watching. We love a performance, you know? What do you think about consent and boundaries? Like, what's the difference? I don't know if that's a dumb question. That's a great question. Let me answer it really fast. Boundaries are for yourself. And consent is in regards to usually someone else. So boundaries are things you put on yourself. Oh, I actually have a boundary about going to bed on time, guys. So I actually have to get going because my bedtime is in less than two hours, right? I'm That's not your consent or my consent being violated. But if I said, hey, don't put my address in the chat, you're violating my consent. That's not a boundary. You're violating my consent. My boundary is I invited you into my chat, but now I'm going to block you because now you're like, this is a boundary. I can't, I can't do this, right? So consent is like a violation that happens between something that's like understood or agreed upon in terms of, you know what I mean? And a, a boundary is something I do for myself. A boundary is about us. We do not put boundaries on other people. We put boundaries on ourselves, and we, we have a consent conversation with other people. Oh, actually, I don't consent to that. I cannot participate in this. But if you break my consent, it's like, now you can use boundary and consent as a synonym sometimes, right? And some people do, but for sake of this conversation, that's how I separate it in my mind. So of course you can use boundary, like don't violate my boundary, which I would say don't violate my consent. I have a boundary, but everyone uses language different, but that's how I would separate it. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool